Hey, this is Kevin Wallace, and I wanted to answer a really common question that I get. Many of my students ask what they should use to get some hands-on experience with their Cisco gear as they're going after their CCNA or CCNP and writing and switching studies. Well, there are several options out there. You could certainly buy your own gear and make a home lab. That's a great solution. Cisco has the viral application. I've purchased and used that one. It's really nice. There's a little bit involved in getting it installed, so please be aware of that. But you can be very creative and you can interconnect devices however you want. There's GNS3 that's been out for several years. It doesn't have a really great solution for layer two switch emulation. You have to use something else to make that happen. But the solution I wanted to review in this video is Cisco's Learning Labs. With Cisco's Learning Labs, you can target a specific exam. For example, I'm signed up for ICND1, ICND2, Route, Switch, T-Shoot, as well as a CCA Lab Builder product, which I'll review in a different video. But here I want to focus on the CCNA and CCMP routing and switching Cisco Learning Labs offerings. When you buy these, you're going to get a block of hours. So for example, for this Switch product, I've got 50 hours of access total, and I can use those 50 hours anytime over a 180-day period. And one of the advantages that the Cisco Learning Labs solution has, besides being fairly low cost as opposed to purchasing your own gear or maybe even buying Cisco Viral, is that it's got a lot of great lab scenarios that you can go through. You're not just thrown into a virtual sandbox of virtualized gear and told, okay, go. You know exactly what you're trying to do. These labs are structured to get you better prepared to take the exam. And I wanted to give you a feel in this video for what it's like to be in this Cisco Learning Labs environment. And these labs are actually emulators. They're not simulators, meaning that you're running actual iOS. Specifically, you're running IOU, which stands for iOS on Unix. You're connecting to virtual instances of iOS, including Layer 2 IOU. We're able to emulate switch functions. And I thought we would go into this ICND1 offering just to take a quick look at what it's like to configure routers and, and view router and switch configurations. I've been playing around with this implementing a single area OSPF2 lab. Let's say continue lab. I want to say I want to resume this lab. And by the way, you've got the option to manage your devices. I really like this feature. You can go into your different devices and say that you want to reload the initial configuration. You can power cycle an individual device. You can power cycle all the devices, just as if you were there next to real equipment and you physically toggled off the, uh, the power switch and then turned it back on. But here's our topology that we're working with. And uh, you can see that there are several tasks and you can choose to do exactly what the tasks are asking you to do, but you can explore a little bit. This is not a simulator that's on rails where you have to do this command before you're allowed to proceed to the next command. No, these are virtualized router instances and a virtualized switch instance. And we can go play around a bit if we want to. You're not forced to do things a certain way. Now you are given solutions. If you want to take a look at the uh, final configuration after you're done, you can print out the diagram so you can have that on your desk as you're going through the configurations. What I like to do is to say print, and it's going to print out all the tasks, every step-by-step -step thing that you have to do to complete these tasks. But just to give you a sense of what this is like, let's connect to a few of these devices. Let's connect to router R1. In another window, it's asking if I want to allow a telnet connection because it's actually opening up a telnet connection to this virtualized router instance. And I've opened that up in my terminal emulator. I'm using a Mac OS X, and this is the terminal emulator that comes with that. Let's open up switch one, and I'll say, yes, I want to allow that. Let's open up the branch router, and I'll say, yes, I want to allow that. And what I can do is to say that I want to merge all of my windows together. So I can give these some labels. I'll say this is R1. This tab is my switch SW1. This tab is my branch router. Great. So now I've got label tabs and I can easily jump between these different devices. And let's start off on the switch. Let's make sure that the ports connecting out to R1 and to the branch router are in the same VLAN. We've got Ethernet 0 slash 0 and Ethernet 0 slash 1. Let's check it out. Let's do a show VLAN brief command. And I can see that, yes, all of these ports, they belong to VLAN 1. That looks great. Let's go to the branch router now. Let's do a show version just to see what version of Cisco IOS we're running. Running 15.238T. And if we want to, we could look at the 
running configuration. Let's go into global configuration and let's start to configure OSPF. I'm going to say router OSPF and I'm going to give a process ID. I'll just say it's one and as a good practice, I'll enter a router ID. I'll say router hyphen ID and I'll give this a router ID of 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And with OSPF, we need to instruct our interfaces to participate in OSPF. And this leads to a common point of confusion. Many people would look at this topology and say that, well, if I want 172.16.10.0/24 to be advertised by the branch router, then I need to give the network command. And that network command is saying, advertise this network. That's really not what's happening. If I say network 172.16.10.0 and then give a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255 and say you're in area zero, I'm not really saying I want to advertise that network. I'm saying any interface that belongs to that network address space is going to participate in this OSPF process. So I'm really using the network command to instruct one or more interfaces to participate in OSPF. That's a common point of confusion. And I want to show you a few different ways of setting this up in this little demonstration. And one of the reasons I'm going to show you some different ways of making interfaces participate in OSPF is to make the point that with Cisco Learning Labs, you're not forced to do things a certain way. We've got more than one way to meet these lab tasks oftentimes. And I want to show you that we've got the flexibility to do that. A common thing we might do is to say network 172.16.10.0 and then we'll give a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255. We'll say we're in area 0 and that makes that interface participate in OSPF. But let's take a look at this interface that goes down to R3, 172.16.20.0 slash 24. Let's do this differently. Let's not use the network command. Instead, let's go into interface configuration mode for Ethernet 0 slash 2. And I'll say IP OSPF process ID 1 area 0. This is saying that I want this interface to participate in OSPF process ID 1 as a member of area 0. And we can do some verification commands. I can do a show IP protocols command and we can see that we're routing for this network based on the network command. And we're also having this interface participate in OSPF. It's explicitly configured, we're told. And if I do a show IP OSPF interface brief to see what interfaces are participating, we see both interfaces. I told them in different ways to participate in OSPF and they're both participating. Now let's go down to the R1 router and let's set it up and hopefully we can form an adjacency with the brand router. Let's go into global configuration mode and I'll say router OSPF. Another point I want to make here, the number that I give here does not have to match the number that I gave on the branch router. I'm going to say OSPF2. This is a locally significant process ID. This is not an autonomous system number. If I were setting up EIGRP, I would need to have a matching autonomous system number or BGP would have to be a matching autonomous system number. But here, this is a locally significant process ID. I'll give this a router ID of, I'll say 1.1.1.1. And here's yet another way to tell an interface to participate in OSPF. I can say that I want all of my interfaces on router R1 to participate in OSPF, area 0. I can say network 0.0.0.0 and as the wildcard mask, I'll make it all 255s. And then I can say area 0. And that command causes all of my interfaces to participate in OSPF. And you see it worked. We just had an adjacency come up. Let's give a couple of verification commands. I'll do a show IP OSPF interface brief. And you can see that my loopback zero interface and my Ethernet zero slash zero interface, they're both participating in OSPF. Let's do a show IP OSPF neighbor command. And we can see that I have a neighborship with 8.8.8.8, which is the router ID that we just gave to the branch router. And again, the purpose of this video was not to teach you OSPF. It was to demonstrate the Cisco Learning Labs and what the interface looks like. It feels like I'm in an actual router right now because I virtually am. I'm running iOS on Unix and we've got switch functionality as well. And this was for ICND1. Let me give you a little preview of what's available in some of the other offerings. Let's exit. And I'll go back to my account home. For the Switch course, let's see what's available here. Look at all these exercises that we can do on Switches. Looks like we've got about 17 Discovery Labs. And then we've got about 16 Challenge Labs. What about T-Shoot? Troubleshooting. That could be a challenging one to study for. Because if you want to practice troubleshooting scenarios, something needs to be broken in your topology and then you need to go fix it. And if you're just trying to do this yourself with a GNS3 or viral, you know what you broke possibly. Maybe you work with somebody else and they go break something and you have to figure it out. But I really like the way that this is laid out. If we take a look at the T-Shoot option, 
We've got these hypothetical companies that we're working with. We've got this company. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. We've got TINC. We've got Pile Forensic Accounting. We've got a bank, it looks like. Some other difficult to pronounce name. But we've got these virtual companies with existing topologies and things aren't working right and we have to go in and figure out what's going wrong. For example, let's go into one of these challenge labs. This is a garbage disposal company and we can see what their network looks like and we're given the scenario. We'll pull up the scenario, make this a bit larger so we can read this. We're given a scenario that we work for this company and we're having this issue. During network maintenance of Gateway 1, a customer realized that Gateway 2 does not serve as a backup to the internet. We're concerned that if GW1 goes down, GW2 is not going to pick up and get us out to the internet. So we want to go in and troubleshoot and find out exactly what's going on there. We can even get a hint if we want to. We can say, all right, show me some hints. And this is hinting that we might have a misconfiguration with BGP. But again, we would connect to the routers the same way we were doing earlier in the switches. We would just click on the devices. And I'll bring in this device to our group of windows. Let's say merge all windows. And here's the new one that we just connected with. Gateway 1. And we could give various show commands to try to determine what exactly is going on here. Well, that is a look at Cisco Learning Labs. You're able to target a specific certification exam and you're given an ample amount of time to access this virtualized environment and you're given a decent number of hours that you can use for your hands-on practice. Because at the CCNA and CCMP level, most of your study is going to be going through the actual material, watching the training videos or maybe reading the Cisco Press book. But I think the Cisco Learning Labs offer a great hands-on experience. You're in a terminal emulator. You're working on real Cisco iOS. You're able to do layer two switch functions as well. And besides just having a great virtualized environment, you've got all these structured labs that give you meaningful tasks to aid in your learning and in your exam preparation. And if you want to purchase a Cisco Learning Lab, I've given you some links in the description of this video down below that will get you to the Cisco Learning Lab that is specific to the exam that you're interested in. Well, I want to thank you for joining me for this look at the Cisco Learning Labs and hope that you'll find this is a great hands-on solution for your studies.